The doctors at the hospital turned around and said, well, we're going to discharge you. Um, so then we had to go through all of that and then, but fortunately they also said at the same time, well, there's so much wrong with you now, we'll discharge you as TPI. So there was more doctor's visits and this and that because Veterans Affairs don't take the first doctor's report or the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth. You've got to keep going back and uh, going back and going back to this specialist and that specialist and lifestyle and all of that kind of stuff. So we had two years of changes in medication, admissions to mental institutions, doctor's appointments, uh, and then he was discharged and left at home alone. So yeah, life changed completely from the moment he was diagnosed. Really full on. Very. Mm -hmm. And then I had to work full time at the same time. We'd moved down to Brisbane from Townsville and uh, his older sister Anne was living with us at the time and we were working together. We worked in the same department. So she was there for um, a lot of the initial stuff uh, up until he was diagnosed and then for a little bit longer after he was diagnosed. I don't think she even realises how much, yeah. She did for me. She's so affected by it as well. She saw John change and uh, she moved out, understandably, because I think it got to be too hard. In fact, I think she stayed only because she was worried about me. But she's really the only one that knew what it was like at that time. Because we just, you know, who do you talk to? John, John was getting support through the GP and then she got him on to some doctors in the hospital. And uh, so he was getting some, and we were just lucky with the doctors that he was able to see that he was getting the, the kind of support that he needed and then on to the psychologist and psychiatrist and all of that. But I just had Anne. And even then, half the time I didn't tell her half of what was going on because it was just too personal. But she was it, the thing. And she suffered, she suffered from it. And sadly it has in some ways affected her relationship with her brother um, because she saw some not very nice stuff. She was there right when he was pretty bad. Said it just it just doesn't go away. You can't. You're never cured from it. It's never fixed. You learn if you if you've got the right help, you learn to manage it, and you learn to recognise. Uh, but even the body remembers. You know, there's particular times of the year where all of a sudden, out of the blue, uh, John's behaviour will change, and then you've got to you've got to kind of think, oh, okay, yep, it's that time of year, and consciously you don't remember it but subconsciously, the body does. And that's 20 years down the track, you know. So, uh, as I said, you, never, you don't get over it, it's always there. The general community go, oh, aren't you over it yet? Why aren't you over it yet? Why don't you just get over it? You can't, <laughs> you know. It's like a, it's like it's a chromosomal defect now. It's, it's so a part of who you are now there's no getting over it. You have to live with it and you have to manage it. And it's not as deep or dark or as horrid as it used to be, but that doesn't mean there's not moments where it can be. They might be nanoseconds, but there can still be some deep and dark and horrible moments and he's going to have them forever. And I will have little moments forever, every now and again when little memories of things that I've been through with him I've got them forever. There are little moments where they take me by surprise, where there's a certain smell or I'm just going off to sleep and this ugly, horrible little memory will pop into my brain. Nothing I can do about it except forget up, walk away and try and leave it behind, but it's there. I don't want it, but I've got it and I've got it for life. And I, that's only secondary, imagine what he's got.
there's there's talks about depression there's you know there's a media campaign about depression and all of that sort of stuff there's no media campaign about PTSD there's a lot of hidden figures on PTSD um, and across the community I'm not just talking about within the defense forces across the community people don't want to understand it or recognize it but people didn't want to understand depression or recognize it um, but you know, it's got to, the message has got to be out there. And most of the suicides for, for the defence personnel are all PTSD related. In fact, all the ones that I know of in the last five years are all PTSD related. Bar none. Very sad. Very sad. Um, especially when they're people that you've laughed with, you've, you've joked with, you've sat down in the boozer and drunk with you've had a meal with and then they're gone and it didn't matter what you did, they're, they're gone. So it's the saddest part of it all is if they um, didn't find a way through. Yes. And but John almost, you know, if, if for uh, an act of God, he wouldn't be here. And I had no idea. I had no idea it was that bad. I knew it was bad. Shit, I lived it. It was bad. I never want to live that again. <laughs> but I never knew for him it was that bad. But it was. And it just, I don't know, luck, divine intervention, I don't know. He's survived and he's come out the other side. But he was determined not to. Mm. So that's why we can't we can't not talk about it, we can't hide. Because he now understands that that's what he did. He didn't talk about it, he hid it, and he almost succeeded. Scary. Mm. And there are too many people falling by the wayside, be it the persons that have served all their spouses, all their children, that are hurting um, and not understanding and not getting the help that they need. We can give them something, we can give them hope, we can give them a smile, we can give them a hug. And that's what we want to try and do, uh, little by little, piece by piece. And if it just gives them a moment to think, okay, I'm okay. I'll be okay. These people have done it. It can happen. Then we've done it, you know. Wow. <laughs>